Hi, this is Robert Inklar, and this is the explainer on growth models. The first model is the Herod Domar model, a so called linear growth model, uh, as we'll see. The first part of this model is the production function. It shows how output is produced using uh, capital and uh, population. The second is an identity showing that the output is either consumed directly or saved. The third one shows that savings are invested in the economy. And for simplicity, we're assuming here that there's a constant savings rate denoted by S. This is a closed economy model because savings equal investment. So there's no capital coming in from abroad uh, or uh, moving to other countries. The, th the third model uh, is, uh, the third equation is uh, the capital accumulation equation. So it tells us that um, uh, investment is used to build up the capital stock. So the investment at time t is added to the capital stock in that period, uh, but that capital stock also depreciates at a rate delta. So over time, if, without investment, capital stock would disappear. Now, an important uh, result in this, from this model is that there's linear growth. Um, so capital accumulates and capital is transformed into, uh, into output at a constant rate. So more investment means uh, a higher growth rate. Uh, we can express this uh, in equation form. Uh, we can uh, we add the growth rate of GDP per capita, given here by the lowercase uh, y, is given by the following equation. Um, so countries with lower savings rates or a higher capital output ratio C will have lower growth per capita. Um, and again, we're talking here about a closed economy uh, where the savings in the economy are necessary to build up new capital. Um, but of course, this can also be extended. So if you are talk, thinking about an open economy, then savings can come from abroad. So foreign direct investment or foreign aid can, would lead to faster growth in this model. Now, a somewhat more complicated version of this is the so-called solo model. And we'll talk mostly about that one. Um, and what sets the solo model apart from the Herodoma model is the production function. Um, and this production function has uh, displays diminishing returns to capital. Um, how do we know that? Well, we know that because there is a coefficient alpha uh, on, uh, on K. Um, this is also a constant returns to scale model because uh, the coefficients on, on capital K and population P sum to one. Now, to see what uh, this addition of this parameter alpha, the output elasticity of capital does, let's plot GDP and capital per worker. And as you can see here, um, as capital increases, uh, output will increase and will continue to increase, but at a slower rate, uh, because alpha is less than one. The capital accumulation part is very similar to that in the Herodoma model. So there's an accumulation uh, equation uh, that is identical to the one in the Herodoma model. Um, but a key, and, uh, and we can then write the change in capital as, uh, as, as follows. So there's an accumulation of capital given by um, uh, the savings rates times income, but there's also depreciation and dilution. Uh, so if the capital stock loses value at a faster pace, the growth rate of the capital stock will be lower. Um, if there is a faster population growth, um, we, that doesn't have an effect on the overall growth of the capital stock, but it will decrease the growth in capital per worker. 
uh, or capital per uh, person in the economy. The similarity to Herod Dolmar is here that the savings determine capital accumulation and thus drive growth. But thanks to diminishing returns to capital, so here we, in this figure we plot uh, the production function from before, but added to that is first the savings curve, uh, which shows uh, how, how much savings are available, and second, the depreciation and dilution term from before. So in periods where, uh, um, where savings are higher than this depreciation and dilution, we will see uh, an increase in capitals per, per person. If, uh, and that will happen in, uh, in this part of the graph. On the other hand, if depreciation and dilution exceed savings, we will see a decrease in the capital stock. Now, as a result of that, uh, we will see uh, that there's convergence to a steady state. And in this steady state, uh, we will see a, a constant capital per person level and as and similarly a, con a steady state income per work. Now this setup of the model leads to some very powerful and useful conclusions. Um, now the most important thing the most important thing is that most factors that could be considered important for economic growth will only have a temporary effect on the growth rate. So all these elements, the savings rate, the population rate, even the level of technology, uh, will only lead to a shift in uh, of the of the of the steady state. For instance, if the savings rate increases, that shifts up the savings curve, and as a result, uh, the 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 steady state uh, capital level will uh, move rightwards, and we will have a higher income level. Similarly, if there's an increase in the population growth rate, uh, that will shift up the, uh, uh, the depreciation and dilution curve and hence uh, lead to a leftward shift of the a downward shift in the steady state capital uh, per person level and thus to a lower income level. Now, very much related to this uh, conclusion is that if you have countries with the same parameters, so the same savings rate, the same population growth rate, etc., countries will have the same steady state income level. So uh, countries that are initially poor will converge to the same income level. Now, this is under the assumption that there are no technology differences. Uh, so the parameter uh, a should does uh, if the, if that is the same across countries, then we would see uh, income levels converge to the same levels. Uh, now this uh, this figure uh, drawn from a textbook uh, presents a, a, a slightly more general perspective. Um, there could be differences in output per person because of differences in uh, factor accumulation. And that's the that's the case emphasized uh, now. So there you can you'll see that uh, two countries are on the same production function, and all that matters is how much uh, capital they have, they have accumulated. Now I, you could explain the same income differences uh, with uh, countries being on different production functions, so having different technology levels. Um, and finally, there could even be a mix of cases um, where both differences in productivity and factor accumulation lead to differences in income levels. But still, uh, to show that, uh, the, that income differences can be reduced and growth to a, a small set of factors and that many of these factors will not lead to persistent differences is an important outcome of these growth models.